Hi, this is Terry Bach, and welcome to the Rewrite Your Money Story series. In the work that I do, I see a lot of women, some men, but mostly women who have financial fear. And what I mean by that is that they have debt and they're so paralyzed by their fear and their anxiety that about that debt that they're not even taking action. So they're not looking at their credit card statements. And so they're unable to have a very helpful financial plan to get out of the debt because they're so paralyzed in the fear and anxiety. So I've brought together some incredible experts on the topic of financial fear. And each of our experts will be talking about this topic from their specific point of view. They all have different, very different backgrounds. So today I've invited Miranda Marquit as our expert. Miranda's been working as a financial writer, freelance writer, and an, a money expert for 15 years, uh, making money as the primary breadwinner for the family. She works with money stories and money mindset. So welcome, Miranda. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk with you. <laughs> so I know that you work around money stories. So what are some of the money stories that you've heard that we, we tell ourselves that hold us back? Yeah, I think, um, oh man, <laughs> I think a I lot know. of right <laughs> there's so many yes. um, one of the things that I find a lot with women one of the big money stories that I find a lot with women is um, I don't know enough to start investing um, mm. huge money story that women tell themselves uh, because investing so often is just shrouded in all this jargon and all this these myths and and we really have this kind of 1980s kind of view of investing where it's like, oh, well, I've got to have tens of thousands of dollars and I have to call a stuffy broker and we have to, you know, very and, it, true. and it feels very complicated and it feels very specialized. Um, and that's kind of a money story that a lot of women tell themselves is I can't invest. I'm no good at investing. Um, investing is too hard. Mm -hmm. um, I need to have a lot of money to start investing. Okay. And, yeah, and one of the beautiful things about investing today is we have so many great ways to get started. The barrier to mm -hmm. entry to investing is very low right now. Um, you know, there are there are so many tools that you can use um, to actually get started investing and start investing with like five bucks. And so, right. you know, that's one of the biggest money stories I hear a lot of women tell themselves. Um, another. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> which really <laughs> falls into that financial fear. They're so afraid of, of checking it out even that it doesn't happen. Yeah, and it, and it can be very paralyzing because, you know, we do have this kind of myth in our society that it's, you know, it's this mystery. And, um, you know, and I think, too, we also have a myth as women and in our society that, you know, really women are all about, you know, oh, well, you know, my job with the budget, my job with the money is mm -hmm. to um, clip the coupons, look for the deals, look for the savings. And those are good things. Like there is nothing right. wrong with those right. things. Right, exactly. Uh, but we kind of tend to pigeonhole ourselves mm -hmm. and we feel a bit of fear stepping outside that. And we feel this fear of kind of pushing the boundaries of what we're supposed to do as women in society and what society kind of pigeonholes us as. And so that's another big fear that I see with a lot of women as well. This idea, well, you know, I take care of the money saving things. I take care of the frugal things. My partner is, you know, my partner does the investing um, or, right. you know, or yeah. these other money things. And, and then, you know, the other thing is, is we're kind of afraid to kind of step into that world do some of that long-term financial planning, you know, and, and it's, it's again, kind of goes back to those things society has told us about mm -hmm. how women handle money and what women should be responsible for. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Any other money stories that you really see coming up? I know there's a ton of them. Right. Yeah. And then another one that I see a lot is um, it's, a little more nebulous than this, but it's kind of like this whole idea around 
um, not having enough. And mm -hmm. you know, that whole idea of right. scarcity, that whole idea of is I don't have enough money to do X. And we tell ourselves, I don't have enough money to do X. Uh, therefore, I have to sacrifice. I have to give things up. Um, and, and so then that kind of just becomes this, you know, ongoing cycle where we're, we're afraid to, you know, look at, you know, when we get a little extra money, we're afraid to enjoy it or we're afraid to spend it. Um, and that kind of, you know, and, and, and we kind of, you know, in some ways, it kind of makes us afraid to like earn more money, right? Because we're exactly stuck. we're stuck in lack. Yeah. Yeah. We're stuck in this like this scarcity mindset, this lack. Yes. Oh, I'll never have enough. I'll never be able to do this. But then at the same time, it's it's sort of this weirdly comfortable place. Like I've been there. Mm -hmm. Like I've been there, that weirdly comfortable place where you're just sure. like oh, I can't make ends meet. What will I do? You know, and, you know, yeah. this and try and manage this. And because it's, it's known, you know, we don't know what to expect in those other bigger realms. Yeah. And so, so that's yeah. kind of another thing that just sort of <laughs> makes it difficult. <clears throat> we have all, uh, and it just sort of, as women, I think a lot of these money stories kind of mix all together. And we have this fear of earning more money. We have this fear of investing. We have this you know, fear of stepping outside of what we know and what we've been told we should be doing. Exactly. And then it kind of mixes all together and it kind of really holds us back. Right. I remember when I used to live in California and I did very well in the housing market there. So I took equity out and bought a, a lake home, which I live in now in Minnesota. But I remember when I was going through this process thinking, and it just came out of nowhere. Women don't buy second homes. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> but women, I really had to work on myself to like, why can't women do this? And so I did it, but boy, I had to, talk, I had to go through a lot of stuff to make it okay. Oh but, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's, we kind of feel like we feel bad about getting out of our lane. And, and, yeah. And yeah. a lot of the time that, can really hold us back because you know our lane is what we make it but a lot right. of us, we let others right. impose that on us yes yes and we believe it yes yeah uh, yeah so how do you help women begin to make that mind shift or that mindset shift i guess and and change those stories that we're all telling ourselves no matter how educated we are um yeah ourselves so one of the things that i find has been really helpful um on one hand is like the nuts and bolts the education mm -hmm. you know, it's saying uh especially with the investing when you can sit down with somebody and say hey here's how easy it is to invest here you know you can open an account with i mean there's so many places now exactly you know, you know you can open an account with like betterment and set up a thing um you know depending on the type of account you're planning on opening um you know fidelity now has and that's a major you know brokerage you know mm -hmm. you can open an account with fidelity with very little money um if you're concerned about you know not having a lot of money to invest and just investing pocket change there's a tool called acorns that can help you like automatically invest mm -hmm change so there are all these different tools and I find that if I sit down and we talk about well here are some of the tools here's how to do it let's go through this step by step and they see that they can do it and right. it, that's very empowering and that really helps them start saying oh this is easier than I thought it doesn't mm -hmm. be shrouded in mystery I don't need tens of thousands of dollars um, and just being able to sit down and and just you know have that education piece and then also that nuts and bolts piece where okay. okay this is the practical side of it um what's harder to overcome of course are those um psychological and <laughs> mental biases yes yeah and really it just comes down to like once they see how easy it can be or how they can do it well mm -hmm. or even how they can just grow their wealth by not you know you don't have to be an active trader you know, so many of these tools allow you to take advantage of you know, strategies like indexing where you buy like whole swaths of the market and you don't have to try and like 
be a stock picker. <laughs> like, right, right. True. I mean, that's something. Um, mm -hmm. but, but that first step to say, oh, yes, I can do this. Um, goes and, and really seeing how easy it can be really kind of starts to move into these other areas where they can say, oh, well, if I can do this, if I can set up the situation where when I spend a little money, it rounds it up and I have to, and I get to use my pocket change to invest and start growing my wealth a little more. Mm -hmm. They start asking other questions like, well, wait a second, <laughs> you know, why can't I ask for this raise? Why can't I? ask for more okay. um, and that and that's and you know and and part of that too is just looking at it and and helping them give themselves permission um i had to do that myself you know mm -hmm. when, I, when i started you know um trying to figure out how to earn more money trying to figure out how to um you know really use my finances to create a lifestyle i wanted right. um I had to give myself permission to do that. Like a lot of the time. I know. Yeah. So, so working on that and that's hard. I mean, it really it is, is yeah. um, to do that. And, and sometimes like um, understanding that, you know, you're not going to wake up one day and it's going to be like that, like all right. of a sudden, <laughs> right. Understanding that it's a process and it's a journey. Um, there are lots of times that I got really discouraged because I was like, Oh, I was making all this progress. And now, Oh my gosh, now I'm back. To, you know, now I've, you know, I've gone three steps forward and I've moved two steps back, but I'm still one step forward than I was before. So exactly. So kind of, so you had to shift your own mindset. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> investing and doing, do you work a lot with women in investing? It sounds like that. Um, yeah. So most of the time when I am working with women who are trying to improve their financial situation, a lot of it does have to do with investing, getting started okay. and kind of making uh, that move. Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of the time, you know, before you can get to that point, you do have to deal with things like debt. <laughs> you do have to deal with trying to like you do. Get out of debt, trying to work on getting to a place where you understand your values and your priorities and you really have to clarify those. And that's another key to overcoming that, making that mindset shift. It really is. Um, yeah. Yeah, because so many of us don't haven't taken a step back to think about what do I value? Like, mm -hmm. what are my priorities in life? What do I want my life to look like? What what are my you know deepest held values? And the way I use my money, the way my money's being spent, is that reflecting my values? And a lot of the time, it's not. <laughs> like a lot of the time, yeah, that consciousness exactly. isn't there. And teaching yeah. people to say take a step back and like look at well, where is my money going? And then comparing it to, well, what do I say I value? But where is my money mm -hmm. going? And do these things match up? And a lot of the time they don't. And so part of that mindset shift is taking a step back and saying, wait a sec, am I just looking at money as, you know, yeah. the end itself? Oh, if I had more money, this, 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 this. Or am I saying, wait a second, no, money is, money is a tool. Exactly. Like, yeah. Money is means the end so i need to figure out what i want first i need to figure exactly. out what I value first yeah. then i can go backward exactly so you've talked about values and, and we've ta i've talked a little bit more about the emotion and getting frozen and all of that kind of thing why do you think that mindset is so important and um you know to improve finances because that's kind of what we're talking about here right um, yeah yeah, well, because, uh, you know, you know, we talked a little bit about that lack and that scarcity mindset. And if you always expect that you'll never have enough, and if you always expect yes. that you'll always be behind, and you always expect that you'll, you know, you'll never be able to live the lifestyle you want or, or do mm -hmm. the thing you want to do, if you always expect that, then it does become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, you know, when, when those are the things you expect, you get caught in actions that perpetuate that you right and, yeah. yeah so when you start shifting things and say okay uh, money is a tool this new mindset of money is a tool and i can use it to do what i want i can use it to reflect my values so, um you start saying oh wait a sec now i'm in control of my money my money's not in control of me and that's why that that mindset shift is so important to say right. i'm 
I direct my, like my, money is a resource and I am in charge of it and I direct it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I want to pay down some debt. So I need to take a look at my financial resources. What do I have that will help me pay off that debt? What do I have? I want to invest. What do I have that will help me invest and build my wealth? So mm-hmm. I can do other things. Okay. Um, so that's, and that's, you know, why it's so important to like change the way you look at money and think about it. So how might you handle, uh, let's say a woman comes to you. Um, I'm not sure if somebody like this would come to you, but, <laughs> and she's kind of like how I described at the, at the beginning, you know, she's kind of frozen. She's not looking at her situation. So she may not come to you. You may not see people like that because, you know, if she's frozen, she may not be looking yet. Um, but do you ever see people who are just like, they don't really know, they don't really have a handle on what their finances are because they're kind of afraid to look at it. Yeah. So one thing that I find, I, and like you said, I don't actually see a lot of people like that. Um, right. Right. But I do see a, a few on occasion. And one of the things that we work on first is finding one thing, just one thing about your financial system and your financial situation that you can control. Okay. And because if you look at the whole, like sometimes, like you do need to look at the whole picture at some point. Yeah. But, but doing that when you're already really afraid and already frozen just freaks you out even more. So, so honestly, finding that one thing, mm-hmm. you know, like looking at it and say, what is one thing I can do? And I was actually working with um, somebody not too long ago who was like looking at her overall situation and she was so overwhelmed and she's like, I don't even know where to start. Right. And I was like, well, what is one thing that you can do? And she said, well, I can pay the minimum, I can make the minimum payment on this one credit card. And she said that she'd been afraid to look at it and mm, it was, you know, yeah. it was like 60 days past due and she'd been afraid to look at it. I said, Let, well, let's do that first. Let's make our minimum sure. payment on this one credit card. And she did it and it was weird, but she felt better. And, you know, because, because she was movement forward. Yeah, yeah. Movement, she was taking action. It was one sure. thing she could do. And so she did that. And then we looked and said, oh, well, now you're, now your account is up to date. Let's keep that account up to date. Make sure let's set up an automatic payment so that okay. every month you have this automatic payment and that payment is up to date. Okay. So that's taken, that one thing is taken care of. Now let's find one more thing okay. that you can do. So let's find one more action you can take. And, you know, and she looked at everything and she's like, oh, well, um, I've been, you know, I've, I've got this subscription. She was thinking about, she's like, I've got this subscription um, to the gym that I don't use. I mean, like, these are really weird, right. like, really simple things. But when you're frozen, you don't, you don't think of them as simple things. No. They're all part of this big mess that you're trying to figure out. Right. So I was like, well, you know, how can we get out of this gym contract? Gym contracts are really hard mm-hmm. to get out of are the worst Mm, (laughs) they really are but she's like we're like well how can we get out of this gym contract and we looked at it and um she saw that she's like oh well you know and we you know talked to the gym tried to figure this out um if she you know they gave her a thing if you pay x amount of dollars then we'll go ahead and cancel the gym contract before the renewal and so she's like okay she's like well um (laughs) you know, she's looking at everything. She's like, okay, if I just, um, take a brown bag lunch to work just one day a week, Mm -hmm. um, she's like, and and do that for two months, that'll help me save up enough to pay up this amount that they wanted. So we sat down, we worked that out and she started moving forward in that. Um, and she actually found a couple other things that she could save money on and because she was now she's feeling impacted well, I want to find other places where I can right <laughs> yeah you get excited yeah <laughs> you know it's it's exciting now and sure. so so she actually she actually um she found some coupons she could clip and she um had it was it was um she had a little bonus coming in from work and so she took those things and actually put them all toward this amount that she needed to cancel the gym membership and oh. cancel three weeks instead of saving up for two months. So, 
So she was able to kind of absolutely that along because she was starting to feel, oh, this is something I can do. This is a plan of action I can take. Now I can move forward. And we kind of just kind of, you know, and after, you know, finding a couple of things like that, where like the one thing you could do right now to change things, it started to snowball a little bit. And then after a couple of months, she felt comfortable taking a step back and saying, all right, now let's look at this whole thing. Right. Oh, great. I, I yeah. been, you know, because she was able to see results and she was able to do exactly one thing at a time that she could control and see how that positively impacted, impacted her life. And you got her unfrozen by yes. moving forward. Yes. Yeah. That's great. I read somewhere that the average person can, if you look over all the things your money is going out to, you can cut out at least $500 a month. Yeah. So yeah. The, yeah. The average, yeah. The average household wastes between 10 and 15% of its income. Wow. Yeah. So, so, you know, if you, you know, it, it, it kind of varies, but like, so if your take home pay is 3,500, then you can presumably find at least $350 in your budget. That you're exactly. Waiting. And I was able, I, I thought, Oh, I'm going to do this for fun, you know, and yeah. I like to look at my budget every once in a while and just see, okay, what, what am I, you know, cause we end up doing these subscriptions and then we're not using them, but we forget to cancel and stuff. So I actually got rid of $600 a month. Um, wow. I thought I don't need to be going to the chiropractor three times a week anymore. They start right. that way. So I cut that back and my direct TV, I thought I don't really watch more than one or two channels. So I don't need that. Netflix is a lot less expensive. And so just even those two things really cut out a lot of uh, yeah. expense. And you do get to a point where you cannot cut anymore. Right. And exactly. Like yeah. That. And you do yeah. have to like look at earning more, look at, you know, okay, can I get a part-time job? Can I get a side, side hustles are big now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can I, you know, do I need to ask for a raise? And, you know, that's the next thing too, is like, um, helping women kind of get over that fear of asking for more money. That's a huge Yes. Thing. Yeah, whether it's in a job or you're an entrepreneur and you're not charging enough or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and I, and honestly, just just last month, I actually, I actually went through the process of like, I was looking at one of these client, my clients, and I was like, this is the lowest paying client I have. They really shouldn't be paying this small amount of money. And I went through a whole like I I had a problem. Like, mm -hmm, you know, like, right. I, I try to help women like find the confidence, trying to move forward, trying to help them overcome their own money stories. And I still had a hard time like sure. That. I I I stressed over the email I was writing for two days. <laughs> like, okay. Like, <laughs> trying email trying to make it like strong enough, but not too strong. And right. you know, like, like it was a whole thing, and I stressed over it, and then. You know, so many of us who work with other people also have our own mentors and our own coaches. Exactly. And I actually turned to mine and I was like, hey, help me. And she's just like, and she looked at me and she's just like, she's like, you're stressed, just send it. And the worst, thing, <laughs> the worst thing they can say is no. And you find another client that, that will pay that. <laughs> yeah. She's like, that's, that's the worst thing that can happen is they say no and you find a different client that will pay that. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, she's like, she's like, you've been stressing over this for too many days. It's time to hit stand. <laughs> so, you know, and I, who knows how long I would have dithered if I hadn't contacted her. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have our own mentors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Miranda, I know that you have a free gift for the audience. Would you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so um, this gift is uh, my guide to setting your own financial priorities. And so it really takes you through the process of, it's a mini ebook, and it kind of takes you through the basic process of identifying your own values and then using that to set your financial priorities so that you create a spending plan or a budget or whatever you want to call it <laughs> that, uh, that actually fits your lifestyle and your long-term goals rather than basing your budget on, you know, just a list of things that people say you should be spending on. 
Like, yeah. because so often when we make a budget or when we figure out our own financial plan, we mm -hmm. pull up this list of categories that everybody else thinks you should be spending your money on. Right. We don't think about our own values and our own priorities. Mm -hmm. So this is a mini ebook that really kind of takes, takes you through, okay, this is how I set my own personal priorities nice. so that I can then create a spending plan and a future that really matches my values. Wonderful. That sounds great. And for the audience, um, all, there's a button right below this video. So all you need to do is click on the button and it'll take you to Miranda's free gift. So thank you so much for being here, Miranda. I appreciate your time and your expertise. And it was, it was fun talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to the Rewrite Your Money Story series. Tune in tomorrow for our next expert who will be sharing their perspective on financial fear. See you tomorrow.